I think, all right, so how many people live in Brazil? That's a shitload of them, right? So if we have, if we just have open up a Brazilian market, because there's a lot of players too. And in 2015, you know, I was the head coach of the Australian national team and we played in the world championships against Brazil. And they, they had talent, yeah. <laughs> like they had talent. And so, yeah. so if every team has two Brazilians on a team, right, yeah. you can open up the um, game pass market in Brazil. You know, that's something I would think of. And yeah. now Brazil is a really, that's a Mexico, same thing. All right. Mexico, so same. That, that's what I just want to say is Mexicans are great yeah. football players. <laughs> Shit. Yeah. That, I mean. Yeah. So today we are starting something new because we will make a combination podcast for the Football Arna and Coach JL podcast. My name is Johannes Reuter. I'm the moderator. With me is Martin Hanselmann. And also here is our guest from our Football Arna podcast. It would be John Layden. Welcome here uh, to the show. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Thanks. So, so yeah. So, John, you are head coach also. You have been for the Dresden Monarchs and now you are back in Australia and you are head coach for the Croydon Rangers. I hope it was correctly. <laughs> yeah, and pretty good. I, and I think your listeners already know Martin from your other episode, which you uploaded in April. So I think they already know Martin a little bit and I'm just... Uh, football enthusiast i'm a fan i've never played football um but with the american football hype in germany and also as i know martin really long i always had a connection to american football and uh, this is how we started our project here so just for your listeners a short introduction so yeah how we will go in now so which kind of topics i think john you want to talk about like the cologne crocodile thing with martin should we start it directly with this or or let's maybe start australia how big is american football in australia i know there's also like the australian root football uh, which is i don't know how to describe it maybe more like rugby and and uh yeah so how how is is how big is American football in Australia. Yeah, well, uh, thanks, Johannes. Is, is well, football is is not too big in Australia, right? So uh, now, um, just to inform everybody or anybody who listens, right? Australia is about the size of the US, right? And the US has about say 330 million people living there. We have about 22 million. Okay, yeah. so. 22 million, 330 million, the same size. So that's that's one. Um, and then um, two cities, Sydney and Melbourne, both have about, so to say, about four and a half, maybe five million people. So almost half of the population lives in two cities, right? So that's that's one. Um, and the, the leagues that we have here, they're basically city leagues. So there's a league in Sydney, there's a league in Melbourne, there's a league in Brisbane, Adelaide, Perth. So all the major cities have basically one league. And then sort of Adelaide is not so big. So maybe a million people in, live in Adelaide. So and there they have now like four clubs there um, in Melbourne. I think we were about eight, you know, some something like that. So... Uh, Sydney has about about the same eight clubs. Uh, Brisbane has about eight clubs, and depending on which year, there's a, probably about maybe three to four thousand people involved in the game, completely from juniors to seniors. Okay, okay. And how many people are interested, like in American football? Is there a hype as well there, or is it still like uh, base? Uh, no, what is it? It's not baseball in, in Australia. It's what is the Aussie name? Aussie rules. Aussie yeah. rules, like AFL, like you said. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, no, is there a hype? Um, no, I, I, I don't know if you remember a couple of years back when there was a Australian rugby player. He he played for the 49ers. Yeah, yeah, and that, that yeah. was that was big because like Aussie rules is really the the national sport, and then uh, rugby league is is a close second, I would say, or a second. And so this was a pretty pretty high profile player in in uh, rugby league, 
and he wanted to try football, right? So there was a really a hype about the game. Um, the hype is, you know, a lot of times you know, you've seen this in college or in the NFL. There's a handful of Aussie punters, right? Because the AFL yeah. game, they always kick. You know, that it's it's very similar technique. It's not the same, but there's a similar technique to it. So there are a handful of punters in in NFL and and a few handful in the in college. So that is something that people do follow. Um, there is football on TV, free to air, and there's uh, ESPN uh, has, I'd say, four or five games a week uh, in the NFL and. You know, maybe six, seven, eight. You know, in for college. So there is, there is an appetite for watching the game. Okay. Um, it's unfortunately, it's it's playing wise, it's not a huge sport. Okay. 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 Yeah. Thanks for this. Yeah. yeah. You clear that up. Yeah. <laughs> Good. And and you have also like uh, Netherlands rules and Australian rules. Rules are how how is it? Oh yeah. Okay. Yeah. So. Um, I actually, the, you know, it's a funny story. I, I tell this a few times, uh, you know, the, I, I am the only Australian in my family. So that means, so I have Dutch parents who came, um, yeah. came to Australia. Then they had me and then I went back to Australia, to, to the Netherlands to grow up there. Um, and, and over the, over the time, over the years, I've been back and forth. And, you know, since 2007, uh, since, um, you know, Roger Goodell, you know, unplugged the NFL Europe, you know, we went and moved back to Australia full time, or at least call it our home here. And then, you know, every now and then I go back to Europe to coach football as well. Yeah, okay. Okay. And now you're in Australia. Yeah. yeah. And yeah. I, I think this is how you connected also with Martin when you've been in, in the Netherlands and you started uh, to coach American football. Um, and in your last episode, you discussed that you met at the NFL Europe. Do you remember it now, John? Or was it just Martin's uh, <laughs> uh, thoughts? <laughs> Probably just my impression. In, I don't know. I think it was during the NFL Europe, John. Yeah. Yeah. Look, we've met along the way a couple of times, I think. Not maybe real you know, face to face and interacting a whole lot, but be around the same circles and that kind of stuff. And then I think, look, if I think back to, you know, the, yeah, the, I, I think I've been to some clinics where you've been, yeah. you know, where we both attended some clinics, uh, that kind of I stuff. Think the, I remember the Berlin clinic. I think we were both speakers There was a clinic in Berlin, held by the oh, NFL yeah. Europe, and I think we both were speaker there. Uh, could that be actually in the UK? In the UK also. This was yeah. before. You're right. The UK clinic was before the Berlin clinic. Yeah. yeah. And yeah. the UK clinic, th this could be uh, with um, Rick Ayoub. Uh, brought me yeah, over. Rick. Rick, Coach, Coach Ayoub uh, hosted this and... Um, yeah. he brought me over it could be that it was in the uk yeah you're right you're right yeah yeah look all these memories are here somewhere uh, <laughs> but sometimes <laughs> just trying to unlock it all eh? yeah, yeah that's right that's right yeah and then over the, over the, over the course you know obviously you know when you're in cologne we we coach against each other yes in gfl yeah. you know yeah. And, yeah we knew about each other let's say that that's for sure that's, that's probably the, the that's the point yes we knew <laughs> about each other <laughs> <laughs> yeah. uh, how is your story to be a uh, head coach in American football? How did I get to coaching? Yeah. yeah. Well, and that's, oh, uh, I hope we have enough time for all these stories. <laughs> no, I, I Maybe actually, do it short, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's yeah. Very, I can do it very short, right? So oh, all right. I, my, my body was wrecked from playing football. And I was like, I, you know, I just, I just had enough. I, I would like to play, but my body had enough. And I, um, I decided, you know what, I, I'm going to be, I'm going to play guitar in a rock band. Okay. So I bought an electric guitar, an amplifier. I took lessons and then some, some bright spark on our team. So like, like, why don't you start coaching? You know, like you, you were a team captain. You, you do a lot of that, you know, coaching anyway. And that was it. Like, like, 
I literally, guys, I had about, I think, four or five lessons with my guitar. I put the guitar on the attic and I just went, you know, head first into coaching and never looked back. Okay. <laughs> I was short, that's short enough, right? That's short that's enough. Short, yeah. That's good. Yeah. It's a great story. <laughs> Look, I, I, I tell you what, the actual, the, the guitar made it back to Australia as well. That, that's, that's how long I kept that thing. Okay. <laughs> You still you still play the guitar sometimes? No, no. Okay. No, I don't. I don't actually. I, I haven't learned how to do it. It's like I oh, I kept the thing. Oh, yeah. No. <laughs> yeah. So, sounds good. Sounds good. And um, yeah. Before we go to the next topic, and um, for our listeners, this is also recording as a as recorded as a video podcast. So I will put the link so you can see us also in YouTube if you want to, but you can also listen to us at Spotify and all other platforms as well. Um, yeah. So now maybe we go to the GFL topic. So you're coaching the Dresden Monarchs like for two, three, four years. Uh, I was I was in Dresden for four years. Yes, four yeah. years. Yeah, yeah. As a head coach, a yeah. coach. Yeah, and then I had and, one and year then... one year off, and then I went to Dusseldorf in 2019. True. For the Dusseldorf Pandas. Correct. Yep. Okay. 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 Yeah. How How was your experience there in in Dresden? I think it's really good club, um, good fans, um, good atmosphere there or, or overall. Yeah. Now there is, you know, there is actually there is nothing that I, that is negative that I could say about the Dresden Monarchs organization or fans or anything around it. Yep. That's that's how good. Uh, yeah. That's I think that's. It's it's an example of you know what what uh, GFL teams should be. I feel that's true. Yes, that's true. Okay, so you you had a good time there overall over the four years. Yeah, then, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, what is special in Dresden? Special. Yeah. Um, all right. So <laughs> what 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 do you say? Special is. So what is really good is that the leadership of the organization is very stable. There are mm -hmm. people who are very passionate and very hardworking and um, they do things, do the right things at the right time. And they also are patient about building the organization over time. So there can be, con there can be some consistency, you know, going forward. Not we're trying to win tomorrow, so and putting all the eggs in one basket so to speak but more all right what is it, what is it that we need to build this organization so that this can be here for a long time okay those there's consistency in the in within the the franchise or within the club yeah yeah, yeah. yeah and and uh, look the um so the like the, the, the The chairman of the forstand, you know, has been there a long time. The GM has been there forever. Uh, the coaching staff, the local coaching staff, have been there forever, and they're all working together. Right? There is, there is not a look. Ah, I just want to do it my way, and I'm going to try. You know, I, I'm going to bring my saw, and I'm going to try and just saw some of your legs out, out, out from under you. So. Yeah, I, like I said, it's 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 uh, Jörg Dressler and and Robert Kruse and and Thomas who've been there forever and basically started the whole thing as as we know it right now. And you know they they just do a f fantastic job. You know, it's like I said, there's and and then oh, what the other thing is the a thing too which is, which is helpful is that Dresden is a pretty sizable city, right? But it's not one of these major Berlin, Dusseldorf, Cologne cities. So what you have there is that Dresden is a big, big number in town, right? So you have the basketball, you have the ice hockey, but Dresden Monarchs is, is just as big as, as the ice hockey and the basketball is more or less. Right. So um, I think that it's, uh, that's helpful too. And hmm. um, you know, what I think what, what the, the Dresdner people are very proud of, too, is that, you know, the, that downtown area just fantastic. You know, yeah, the, it's really beautiful. Yeah, it's, yeah, it's awesome. I, um, is this, is this, uh, 
This is why uh, it's my first year in Dresden. We we it was like when we do the team picture, we need to have it on a great wow. location. It's great. Yeah. Can you okay. guys see it up? Yeah. Uh, maybe a little bit closer. Yeah, yeah. So it's in the old town. What is in the background exactly? I've been in Dresden, um, but it's like two years ago. Well, three the, years ago. the Frauenkirche is here. You know, that's, that's, I mean, I think there was like, uh, what is it? 250 million euros was, you know, uh, financed to rebuild, to rebuild yeah. it. Now, I'm, I'm not sure. This is the Opera building, I believe. Opera, Opera. I'm not sure what it's called. But it, this is just, yeah. And then right there, you see the the boats behind it, right? So that's the okay. um, what's the river the Elba. Elba, 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 yeah. So yeah, um, yeah it was um, you know not a picture, you know, in the stadium, you know that kind of <laughs> stuff. And uh, I thought, yeah, it was, it was a really nice touch there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Good memories, good memories. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And yeah, you already mentioned it because this was also thoughts from Martin, the consistency at the Cologne Crocodiles to start there as a, as a head coach. And this was a topic where you want to talk about with, with Martin, like, um, yeah, how is the experience for you, Martin, getting fired before it all started? And <laughs> so maybe you can share your, your thoughts, feelings for all the young coaches out there. Yeah, <laughs> yeah well, Cologne, Cologne Crocodiles was, a, was something. Uh, that, that's really an interesting story. I got a phone call from uh, the board members there and uh, they asked me, hey, um, we would like to meet with you. Um, we'd like to, we're looking for a coach. And um, I got some people who brought up my name over there. And uh, so I, I went to Cologne. We had a great meeting. Um, I had my uh what do you say do you say lawyer advisor uh you remember stefan breuer stefan yeah of course yeah, yeah stefan is doing all that stuff for me all these contract stuff and uh so we were there both and uh at the end of the meeting we both said hey that that's a great setup that's that's really people are really honest he said they seem honest they uh they are thankful and and they want to build something up there um and then, so we agreed with everything and, and I started work and had nobody from the coaching staff called everybody from the old coaching staff and nobody wants to work with me. I got like, Ooh, that's tough. But I, I, I got some old connections there and, and I hired very good coaches, uh, Peter Heyer, you remember, he's, he's a great guy and a very good football coach, offensive lineman, um, played in the NFL Europe. And I think he also had some time in the NFL. Absolutely, um, yeah. And he's he's a great guy. And then Oliver Tank, he played for me in the national team originally. I think from Darmstadt, and he yep. lives in Cologne uh, uh, there. And and he also is a, he became a very good person, a very good uh, coach, can motivate people, and knows football a lot. Uh, then Luigi um was there i i called him so i got a good group of coaches and i thought all right we can stop the thing and, and it's going and and uh we start practices and then i came out and and all the board members were here jan stecker was there he was one of the board members and um and all the other ones and and we had five people there five players there i got like okay something's going wrong and something's going up and so I started and I called everybody. I called every player, every single player. And and uh, it starts that I got a feeling, oh, there's something wrong. Something's really, it's, it's something is in this team is getting wrong. And I, I didn't, I didn't want to get involved in, in all that stuff. What happened before they had a fight between coaches, staff and, and uh, board and I got like, hey, that's not my, my business. I it's not it's just not my business. My business is coaching football players, and and I know from my experience and, and from my long time of coaching uh, that it's always tough with the board members. And I understand. I try to understand coaches. I try to understand board members. Um, you're always as a head coach. You're always between these two two. And um, so I. I, I tried that and and I talked with with the coaches and they said hey they we need to stay there and we we um, we say hey we're here you can got you guys can come and we coach you guys and um, we had a couple of guys very loyal to the team uh, they showed up and 
um, but but after a while, uh, we got in discussions with the board members, and and they said well, they don't understand what's going on, and and they were very busy calling players and uh, and calling these people, um, the the team manager, uh, the board members. They all really tried very hard, and and honestly, I don't know what really happened, but no players showed up. And after a couple of weeks, um, I was in Cologne. I already was there. I got my apartment set. I got everything set. Um, and Cologne has great facilities. They have great practice fields, turf fields, grass fields. You can use it whenever you want. And I got meeting rooms and, and all that stuff. Um, and I got like, okay, that's that's a good setup. And, and I would like to work and, and start. And it didn't work. It just didn't work out. And players mm -hmm. didn't show up, and um, and then after a while, uh, they they just unplugged it. They they just got and hey, uh, we cannot have that. We we cannot uh, talk with our sponsors. We are not able to start the league. And uh, we had yeah. coaches meetings. How many players we need to start? Um, I was in contact with uh, with all the American players. I, I um, they they were under contract already. There were some strange things in contracts and uh, I, I, I talked with the players and I got the impression that, ooh, that's not a real contract. That's a little bit shaky uh, with all that. But hey, they, they, they all said, no, they don't want to play for the franchise. They don't want to play for this club uh, and for this team. Um, so I hired new uh, American players, uh, John. You know it's uh, that's not the deal. The deal are the the, mm. the homegrown players. They, that's yeah. what you need. You, you find enough American players or whatever uh, players uh, from Australia, and and uh, I, I was ready to recruit some guys from Australia. I, I talked mm. with some guys from there, uh, but but we said, hey, just wait, just wait. We need to see. We need to wait. Um, and the thing where the homegrown players didn't show up. And they just didn't, I don't know whether they didn't trust me, whether they didn't trust the uh, the board, um, whether they want to be loyal with their old coaching staff. I have no idea. Then the, the Centurions were, were happy about that. They could recruit. They recruited a lot of players. The, the Panthers organization recruited a lot of players. Um, <clears throat> so it was not a very nice situation. It was not funny. Uh, but at the end, uh, the Cologne Crocodiles organization had to say we cannot play in the GFL. It's impossible. We do not have enough players. Um, and we do not have the money to pay just the new, uh, new players. And they didn't have a second team that you can start with the second team and try to coach up these guys. No, that's, they were all gone. They were all gone. I think at the end we had about 16 to 20 player, homegrown players. And yeah. the board was, they, they were willing okay. to put a lot of... And uh, um, what are your thoughts now afterwards for this whole situation? Yeah. I still I still can't get it. Um, I, I know that players are loyal to their coaches. And, uh, and you have, a, you have a, um, a connection to your players usually. I, it's, it's just uh, you recruit the players who fit to your character and... Uh, yes, you have a connection. And players are disappointed that maybe the coach get fired or is not here anymore. But on the other side, I, what I couldn't get is, man, I just want to play ball as a player. I, I want to play football. And I'm loyal to my team and to, my, to the organization who helped me and supported me in playing football. Um, I thought in this case that the coaching staff was a little bit overrated. Because at the end of the day, it's not the coaches who are building up a program. Uh, coaches building up a, a team. But the Cologne Crocodiles are a very traditional organization. And um, I, still, I still don't get it. I have no idea what happened in Cologne uh, this year and, and why the players are not came back. Because um, it's, like I said, it's a very good program. Uh, very good facilities and the people in the in the board for me in my impression they they really were honest people that's mm -hmm. all what i can say they treated me well 
and they supported me wherever they could. And uh, that's that's the story about Cologne. I, th I, yeah. I think, John. Yeah. The, so, yeah. It, while you were talking, I I was thinking, you know, the because the we were we were scheduling another podcast to talk about this subject, right? So coaches coaches getting hired and coaches getting fired. That's just part of the the gig, right? And um, but just while you were talking, I just realized, like, you know, th this whole situation is is it's not of your making at all because you you didn't even do anything yet in a way, right? Yeah. There was nothing there. But look, I in 2019, you know, in the middle of the season, you know, I was I was let go with the Panthers, right? So there was, you know, we didn't we didn't win, you know, they um they said, look, no, we're gonna let you go. So sure, yeah, all good. But that that's kind of the um how does that feel like that that's was my, my topic to talk to talk to you about like when yeah. you know how do coaches respond to getting fired you know what how does that work or how do you feel yeah. when that happens you know that's... And, and i don't know how you think about it but um it is at, at the first at the first time you always go like yeah it's normal it's part of the job it's part of the deal uh, you can get fired you know it when you sign a contract that you can get fired um till my stuttgart time i get fired never because i was not successful i always had successful seasons um i remember i got fired as a as a national coach because i felt and we were very good. We, we, we played good. We, uh, we won the uh, World Bowl, first European Championship. In the second European Championship I coached, we were second. So we were in the finals, just were second. Uh, got the, the, the bronze medal in the World, uh, in the world Championship. Um, so it wasn't too bad, I think. Um, but it was always that, in that case, the, I, I felt the president wasn't, very happy with me and and he was always scared that somebody gets more power and and you have power as a head coach over the team but but you need that it's it is like it is but um it was never my intention to to get more power than the president all what i want to do was, was coaching football and and have a good relationship with the players and and build up uh, the sport and build up the the, the yeah the american football in in germany that's always my intention. And so even in, in Dusseldorf, I got fired after, I think it was 15 years. After 15 years, we had the most successful season. After their last German Bowl, we came to, we, we played the semifinals in the GFL. And then I got fired. And, the, and I was really very frustrated. I was disappointed because I got like, man, that's at the beginning, when they tell it to you, you go, okay, it's part of the, game it's part of the job but then if you sit back you go like wow that's uh, what happened there and it's disappointment and and all that then when you get fired because you were not uh you were not successful and i th this is funny the first thing what i did was think about what i did wrong just thought about hey what, what was your uh mistakes your faults and after a while you figure out, well, you haven't done so much wrong. You do things wrong. Nobody's perfect. You you do you make mistakes uh, here and there, um, but overall, and then you figure out. But the circumstances were like this. People had other expectations. Then uh, they were not ready in this in the European League of Football. People were not ready for building up a program like Grayson did over. 10 or 20 years, um, they want to have success right away. Um, yeah. So that's different. And, and um, that, that's not me. That's not me as a coach. I'm more developing things. I like to develop things. Um, and, and so, well, yeah, it's disappointing. And, and the Cologne situation is disappointing because um, I, I want to coach so bad. It's still, I, I told you, it's, it's uh, before the podcast, before we started the podcast, um, that now that 2023 is the first time since 1982 that I'm not involved with a football team. So I'm, I'm in a bad mood every weekend. I'm in bad mood every weekend. I got like, man, what, what's going on? 
And is there a is there like a football for seniors that you can just get your frustration out of you? <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm uh, Chad. I'm just too old for that. I yeah. um, I, I coach youth teams. I, I help the the Bavarian Warriors, this this all star team in Bavaria. I help there the wide receivers, and I'm coaching, but it's not coaching a team. It's it's different sure. and. Um, it's fun. I like I like coaching. When I'm on the on the gridiron, I I really that's that's how I really be happy. That, that's when I'm happy. It's just if I'm on the field and I can work with people, that, that that's what makes me happy. Um, and and now with these two situations, Stuttgart and Cologne, and I thought maybe retiring. I'm I'm old enough to retire. Um, but then then I don't know whether you know it, but um somebody oh, what is the english word for einbruch like as in uh, somebody, robbery like yes, in, it's robbery uh, and uh, and uh, somebody had, or, or I, we had a robbery here at my office and somebody stole oh. all my championship rings no shit and <laughs> they're all gone <laughs> i can show it it's right in front of me on my desk, Empty. I have all my all these things and pictures and medals and and uh, and trophies, but my rings are stolen. <laughs> Somebody stole my rings, and I got like, man, maybe it's a sign. You need another one. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> uh, maybe, maybe it's just somebody told you, hey, get back on the field and do something. Um, and and during the time, I thought, hey. There, there is some energy in me, and I would like to go back on the field, and I would like to to coach. Um, yeah, that, that's are all my feelings. That's all my feelings. If when you get fired, you go like you you go through. Okay, it's just a job. It's uh, you be right. Then you get disappointed. You 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 start analyzing what you did wrong, what was wrong, uh, why why does it came to the situation you don't want it, and after a while. You, you bounce off and you go like, hey, uh, you shake off everything. Go like, nah, hey, I, I, I want to go. I want to go back on the gridiron. I want to go back on the field. I, there's something in me. And and I think these are the feelings of of me, for me, uh, in all these situations. Mm. I So for me, like after 2019, I was, I was angry, man. I was, I was very angry. And look, it, it goes a bit much to go um, into detail of why. But look, as coaches, as coaches, we we, we evaluate every day, right? You know, after yeah. practice, you evaluate what did we do. Like every day, you the film, what did you do? Your practice schedule, your season, all these things, right? So, um, so after is too, like you get five, like all right. So obviously the clear for in, in that situation is very clear if you don't win a game you know that's that's not good yeah. but so so many people there they say like well you know you know how much worse can it uh, get i said oh you watch you watch <laughs> <laughs> well um, when i got fired in stuttgart it's it became worst yeah it, no, that's what i mean that's it, of course look nobody our, thought that but no you the the if if the evaluation is only about winning and you haven't won yet, you can get worse than not winning, right? But there is a lot of things that do can get worse besides the not winning. So yes. that that is look, the there is a lot of people that make decisions and they're not football people, right? So yeah. then then it's like it's like me making decision in um that something has to do with math. I'm not, we're talking about math, but uh, technology, right? We talked about this earlier. I'm not good with technology. And if I have to make a decision based on the technology, I don't know what the right decision is, right? Yes. But I, yeah. I have an idea about football. I, I have an idea about what the right decisions are with football. And, but if you make decisions and you don't have really have the, the, um, you know, the wherewithal and the knowledge for football and you still make decisions then you can you can think that it can't get worse than not winning but yeah. it can it can it can mm. that's, but that's, in in terms uh, of um so you're what what is what advice could you give then sort of like as as a, a coach a young coach getting fired you know what's the advice well the, the 
the main thing is don't step away from football. Don't <laughs> stay stay with the game you love. Uh, you have the patient for. Uh, th this adds so many positive moments to your life. Uh, this is unbelievable. This is culture. This is really unbelievable. And and nobody, I know we are not really well paid here in Europe, um, but you cannot pay all these uh, these moments you you share with players, you share with uh, all that. Um, we both talk also about uh, great victories you have. And um, just this moment when the referee blows the whistle and you know you have won a title, And, and you see, you look in the eyes of, of these players, how much they worked, how hard they worked, how often you yelled at them, how often you uh, encouraged them to stay on their track. Um, just this moment, is it worth uh, to do it all? And, and uh, mm -hmm. these are moments you will never forget in your life. Um, so I, th that's the main thing is... Uh, Don't think about quitting. Don't think about being retired or whatever. Um, just analyze what happened. Um, try to, well, what I try to do is really making a list of points what I want to make sure I have with my next contract. And mm -hmm. not about money or, or whatever, just about facilities, um, support, uh, team management, mm -hmm. uh, sideline uh, things. Um, that, that's what I do, and and uh, this is what how I choose then the next team. Do they have this? Do they have this? Uh, I want to become better. I want to I want to become um, a better coach, uh, and I need need support on sideline. I need support on on all these little things. And uh, you, you know, I'm I'm flying pretty much every year uh, to the United States to to stay on football track to learn. Uh, modern football. I don't want to be old school football uh, coach. See, when I when I mentioned that old school uh, coach, um, when I get fired once, um, I remember that that players always got like, uh, coach, this is old school. You're old school. That, that's different. And I started, and and this was my mistake. I started thinking, okay, maybe. Maybe you you should open up your mind more and um, and listen to the players, uh, John. This was totally wrong. You listen to the players, yes, but you make the decision, mm -hmm. and and there is no there is no short short way for the for success. That's hard working. Yeah. That's running, and it's not coach. All this running makes us. Uh, makes us more uh, not competitive. It, uh, we get more injuries and blah, blah, blah. No, no, <laughs> it's not true. It's just, you're lazy. You, you, you just go through it, go over it and, and do it. So I learned that, um, that, that I don't listen too much to the players anymore. I, I listen to them in all their advices and, and uh, people change. Young players are way different to the, The, to the first generation of players I coached. Um, you have to listen to them, but you make the decision. It's not their decision. Mm. It's, it's the coach's sure. decision. Mm. And, um, and these are things I would advise to, to, to young coaches. Stay on your track. Uh, don't listen too much. Learn, but don't learn from the wrong people. Mm. Learn from the right people and, and just develop your coaching every day. I think the 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 one the one thing that stands out for me is like you know just don't take it personal. That, that's for sure. Like I just you know, and and, and the the other thing too is like is um, there was always reasons why you are letting letting go. Yeah. They let you go, right? Uh, but it happens to everybody, right? It happens to everybody, and I always like like if you know. In the NFL, go, guys get hired and get fired, yeah, and it yeah. doesn't mean anything. But you, so let's say, don't take it personal, and don't let it stop your your growth as a coach and your development. And it, that's, it's you know, that's two sometimes. two good things, I would say. Yeah, mm. uh, a, a very good friend and, and head coach Bob Nielsen, uh, he said to me, "If you stay long enough in football, it happens." That's it. Yeah, that's it. That's it. Yep. <laughs>
Case closed. <laughs> Case closed. <laughs> okay, so John, no advice to add from your side, or you have? No, a... like, well, I said like you know, don't take it personal, and 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 just uh, you know keep on developing and growing as a coach, and and, and look, you're always no matter if you get you know get fired or not, like you always just want to go and. And talk to other guys about you know the, your your development. How did they see what what happened? You know, other people's um, objective ob uh, version of the situation is is good to understand, right? But look, in this in my particular situation, it was like um, I, I talked to uh, not so long ago. Talked to uh, Kirk Heidelberg about okay. this too, right? And, and he said, look, um, looking at Dusseldorf, right? how many coaches have there been the last 20 years okay uh, I, yeah. you know you I, I don't know i don't know the 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 number but it's a very long number right <laughs> so now and and if if this if the the right person is not in place it, that can happen of course yeah. but if you if they're if they're always the wrong person all of a sudden right then there's other issues too right so yeah, yeah, that's that's true. Yeah, and uh, I would like to add, everybody needs to know, and and this goes up to the German soccer Bundesliga or the NFL or college. Consistency is a part of success. Sometimes even not the best consistency, but consistency, mm. and people can believe in what happens, and they know what happens. That's a big part of success. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Hmm. Okay, good. So I think for this topic, I, I think it's, it's, it's fine now. And maybe we can go on because another topic which would be interesting from my side, maybe you both can have a discussion about the actual situation in Germany, in Europe with the ELF and the and the GFL, because uh, like John, in your podcast, you already mentioned you had uh, Kirk Heidelberg. He was uh, head coach for the Cologne, Cro uh, Col Cologne Centurions and also offensive coordinator for the Hamburg Sea Devils. Then you had from Rheinfire, Rini Engels, who is uh, Rini Engel, who is a co-owner. And also like, um, yeah, you had in your podcast, Sean Sheldon and Jim Tom Sula. So I think you have a connection to the ELF. I think you, you haven't coached there yet or, no, um, no. yeah, but uh, what is like, uh, from looking outside uh, as a coach. So what, what is your view being outside of the ELF actually? So wh what do you think about ELF GFL and the situation in Europe overall? Yeah. yeah look, um, I've said it a few times and like, I am pro, I call it elf, right? Pro elf It's easy for me. <laughs> ELF, um, but but pro uh, doesn't mean that uh, things can't improve because I, I I do think there's a few things that are just problematic. Uh, you know the 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 all the players that all the German players that play in the, in the Elf obviously are GFL players, right? So that part is. The, where they come from the gfl2 or lower leagues right so that is that is happening so that is that is kind of a problem for the gfl teams um martin you were in stuttgart you know the the scorpions that that wasn't that wasn't pretty um no. you know elmsholm pirates wasn't pretty and there's a uh, lots of other teams that are just really you know decimated by guys leaving um and that's part of life. That that's I understand that, but I I do think that there's some kind of regulations would be good. Um, having said that, it gives more opportunity for more players and more coaches to play on a higher level, and I think that is a good thing. Um, but it it the 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 cooperation or th that's missing in and at least in Germany there's there's no cooperation right on a on a league level. I think that should be that should be something that they look into. Uh, there are teams working together somewhat, you know, mm -hmm. Panther and 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 Ryan Fire. There is at least a friendly situation there. Uh, in Austria, you know, obviously the Vikings and the Raiders, they they have teams in both domestic and the Elf League. So 
Um, I'm all in favor of growing and developing the game. Um, but you know, if it's if it's robbing Peter to pay Paul kind of stuff, right? If we if we're building the elf, but we we're really you know, we're putting the uh, we're putting a dagger in the GFL, it's, it's not a great situation. What do you think, Martin? Um, pretty much the same uh, thoughts, and and I was involved when the ELF started, um, and it's it was a great idea. I think it is still a great idea uh, to do this. Um, after two seasons coaching there, uh, honestly, I, I think the biggest problem, the ELF, is just the money. And uh, it is, I remember when I coached a couple of guys uh, and they came uh, and they were able to, to practice every day. So they, they are not working. They were professional players. And they got paid well, not not really good, but well. Um, they just made a tr tremendous step in their uh, playing and the quality of the of playing. And as long as we have situation that, and I I faced the situation that we came back from uh, from Warklow, uh in the morning at six, and one of my defensive line players said, "Hey, coach, great that we made it on time because in one hour at seven o'clock, I start my shift at Porsche." Um, there, there is no rehab for this guy. He cannot rehab on, on a very good level of football. And, and uh, after watching the games, uh, honestly, I have to say, and it's my impression, it's just my opinion and it's my impression, the quality isn't high enough for the European League of Football because we have too many teams in Europe. We have too many ELF teams and we had too many national league teams and i remember we had i had a discussion with uh, coach Chrisling from the galaxy about offensive linemen just the just the elf teams in germany need more than 90 offensive linemen we do not have them in germany and now you have six well 32 gfl1 and gfl2 teams And you have, I think, seven or eight ELF teams in Germany. Uh, the quality of the offensive line, and, and it's for all positions, it's, it's just an example, because uh, it's always tough to get offensive line players. Um, the, the, we do not have the amount of good offensive line players in Europe to feed all these teams. And it's all, on all positions. And I, I still talk with coaches from the ELF and and... Uh, some of them tell me, hey, we, we play guys we wouldn't start in the past. because, But we need, because we do not have other guys. And if it starts to, uh, if it starts not being an elite um, league, yeah. it, it will be a mix. And and uh, it, that, that's what I think is, is it shouldn't be a mix of, of GFL and ELF and the quality is not as high as it should be. Um, so th that's my biggest problem at the moment. Uh, and as long as the ELF cannot pay their homegrown players in the same way that the other players or just giving them a, a good compensation, um, it, it will become a tough thing. And it, you know it, John, it's, it's so expensive. It's just so expensive running a football program. Oh, yeah. 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 So great point, right? Joe, is there like seven or eight? Like, so if you, right. if you go with, you have nine or 10 offensive linemen. Yeah. yeah that, that's, that's a lot of guys. Now, um, that's where I'm saying some of the, some of the rules, right? What I don't quite understand is um, you have the, um, in the NFL Europe, we had the same thing, right? The the general managers said we need homegrown players so we can sell to our fan base. Look, guy, Ryan Fire, this guy lives in Dusseldorf, or you know, and and he is our starting national player, and we can sell that. I I as much as I understand that, right? And um, I, I, I told you, I, I listened to your last podcast uh, on my way uh, back from practice the other day. And this is how many, how many German players play in the Bundesliga? 
Martin? Well, in, in the in the GFL, you think or no, no. Yeah, okay, so uh, the soccer Bundesliga. Soccer Bundesliga, yeah. Well, I don't know, but not enough. Well, <laughs> there you go, right? <laughs> yeah, so yeah, in, in a in a sport, right? How many soccer players in Germany? Yeah, just right? just and take FC FC Bayern München as as an example. I don't I don't think there are too many kids out of there youth programs yeah I, i'm sure there are just two or three mm -hmm. and all the other guys are so, uh bought uh from other countries and yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah and that makes it expensive <clears throat> no look I, and i you know sometimes you have thoughts about stuff and it's not actually quite 100 percent correct you know like but it's yeah. so by munchen and every bundesliga team has a youth uh, program where yeah. they try to develop the next guy for their team. And um, most of them go play somewhere else and they sell those guys and they try to finance a little bit you know, with all that stuff. And then it's worth maybe having a guy come through every now and then, right? Yeah. But if we, if we look at, 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 the, at the Elf League, is a way we need German talent, right? But they also need to be local. Because there is different rules, you know. If you yeah. you can't house them if they're in, if they're in local, play, you know, all that kind of stuff. Is there's in Germany, there's a lot more players than any other country in Europe, right? <laughs> but it's but, not enough. Yeah, exactly. Well, but if if you it's like like the in Spain now, Spain will have two teams next year, but oh, that's what they saying. only in Spain they need say. 20, 20 quality offensive linemen for two teams. Yeah. That basically, I would think, and I don't know much about Spanish football, but I think that's all the offensive linemen in the country that are any good need to play then on two teams. Um, so that is also different. You know, you, you have Poland. Poland is, is a great example. One team in a one country, they can, they can take all the guys – Right in the whole country that can play for him that are any good, that is different. That is different than having seven, eight teams in the in the country. But, but you have to be able to pay them, because if if the yeah. guy from Spain is down in the south and he's a great offensive lineman, uh, how you how can you transport him to transfer him to Madrid without paying him a lot? So you find him a job. And and that's my that's that's my next point is. Um, all these chop things. It's if if you want to be a professional league, and that's what the ELF needs to become to be an elite league. Is yeah. they need to pay their players, and they don't have to work full time. Because mm -hmm. otherwise, if you work eight hours a day or seven hours a day or whatever, or just four days, your your mental abilities, your physical abilities, are not good enough. To compete with the college players coming over, getting money, uh, doing nothing else than playing football. True, and uh, oh, yeah. that—that's for me a big a point to to get all these players together. Then you know the German, uh, the, the the German government. Then it's complicated with all these uh, social security stuff, and if if because they are not clubs, they are they are yeah. not uh, clubs. They are they are companies, and. Yeah. I think that's the, another big step for all the teams to get the right uh, the the right formula or whatever to have it in the right way, not paying too much taxes and social security and and all these uh, kind of things. Hmm. Well, the so I I do think I look at it a little bit like you know back in the day, what hundred years ago, whatever in in the U.S. You know when there is when they're starting pro football, or I look at here, the AF, AFL, you know, Aussie Rules Football League, not so long ago, these guys weren't pro football players. They had they had their jobs, and then they would come after after their job, they would come practice and play games. And look, the early phase of a pro league obviously isn't isn't great, right? It's yeah. You want to build towards something. Yeah. Um, but I, I do think so, some of more regulations could help, you know, the growth of the game. And yes, because you look the NFL. One thing they do better than anybody else is they want to have parity. 
so that the Lions can beat the Chiefs, right? They yes. want everybody to be able to beat everybody. Yeah. And yeah. so it's not – yeah. So revenue Competitive share – Competitive balance is another, is another big point uh, people should really think about in the league. They, they, should, yeah. they should think of because they need a, a competitive balance because uh, otherwise – if if the Hungarian team plays Rheinfire, nobody wants to see that. Yeah, yeah. And and you need to make it even. It has to be balanced yeah. in any way. Yeah. yeah. So same thing. Like you know, you hear. So last year it was the um, expansion. It was uh, the you know, Hungarian team. I I had um, Boton Boton. You know, sub B. Uh, yeah. He's from Hungary. Played for us, right? Mm -hmm. And a great player. But I don't, I don't think Hungarian football is such that they can compete with Ryan Fire. You know, yeah. no matter how many, if they have all the players on the, on the team from and from the country, right? So, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, that's big point too. Yeah, that's a big mm. point too. What are your thought, thoughts, John, about um, Leipzig Kings? this season because they stopped playing <laughs> during the season because of financial problems what are your thoughts in this direction yeah i I'm, i just don't know for my from if we say martin we said like the elf teams are a business yeah. then you'd think well how much how much is this season going to cost me i have to have that covered otherwise i can't start a season um All right. Um, if if uh, revenue from um, uh, fans, jerseys, you know, game day, all that kind of comes in, and and you think that's going to be, you know, ten times what it's worth, you know, when it's actually the the real number is, I mean, that's a problem. I I have, I have a hard time figuring out what that what went wrong there, Johannes. I like, so I'm, I'm not. I don't really have any insight or inside knowledge of what went wrong there. Hmm. I think it's it's really money issues. Uh, and you mentioned that before, some of these guys, some of these GMs are not football people. So hmm. they don't know how much it costs to run a football team on that level. See, if you yeah. travel, if you, if you travel, it's, uh, you have to stay in hotels and all that. That's a tremendous amount of money what you have to spend there and, and then you haven't paid a player for that then you have the bus companies you, you got your staff you have to play pay and i think some of the guys just don't have a good calculation and in my experience my experience so far and and i i wasn't involved in that too much but i think the league should really have a good financial advice for a newcomer If, mm -hmm. for example, if, if, if Madrid goes on and they go like, hey, we, we are interested, then somebody should explain them on a, on a sheet. Hey, these are the costs you, you face. In the first year, you probably need three millions uh, to start it because you have to make marketing. And for example, the Ravens did a great job in, in uh, getting spectators to the stadium. They were lucky with the NFL game. This made a hype. Uh, but what I heard and what I saw is they did a great uh, a great job on promoting the games in Munich and uh, the area of Munich. But I'm sure this was a a, a great big amount of money uh, yeah. to do that because it's always yeah you need to make advertisement yeah well advertisement costs a lot of money. It's it's yeah. not about the print printing something. It's just spread it out. And you mm. can do it social media, yes, but it's also a little bit money. Uh, just the private stuff is, is for free. But if you want to get a bigger circle of people, then, yeah. uh, then you have to pay for it. Even social media, yes, it's cheaper, but it's money. Then remember how, how many great little videos they had. Somebody has to make it. A videograph or whatever, however these guys are, these new businesses are. They don't make it for free. That's yeah. over. They, they don't make it for free. And uh, then the cost of promotions are probably a high percentage of the total budget you have. And uh, and I think if you if you 
bring in a new team, you should sit down with them and explain this. I, I hope they do it. I don't know, um, but I hope they do it because after year three, they have at least a feeling of how much money. If they talk with the owners, uh, if they have an owner meeting, they should really be honest with their uh, with their expansions and, and with the money thing. And then they know, okay, average an average ELF team needs an amount of blah, blah, blah. I don't know. Mm. Uh, and and I hope they do this and I hope Madrid got this because uh, that's maybe the case in Leipzig that, that people didn't figure out how much money it is, how expensive well, all that is. Remember the World League of American Football, Martin? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yes. So obviously there was the predecessor to the NFL Europe, but yeah. they, they came out and, it, you know, uh, Paul Taglebu wanted a pro global pro league, right? Yeah. And then he figured out, all right, all this flying across the Atlantic, so much money. And yeah. and every year after, really, in the NFL Europe, it was always about cutting costs, yes. right? Yeah. How yeah, do we end up? At the end, we ended up with five teams in Germany and one team yeah. in the Netherlands, right? Yeah. Just to cut Cost. travel costs. Yes, because the, the costs are, it's like I, I said before, it's it, to running a football team and a, and a professional football team is so expensive. Even college, when I when I talk with my friend Bob Nielsen and uh, in South Dakota and we talk about costs, John, they have, they have four full-time people just looking for booster clubs and sponsors and, and uh, guys who, who bring in money. Um, for the for the sports programs, not only for football, but just for the sport programs, um, and and uh, it, it's so hard. And and even him, uh, or even he says, "Hey, if I talk with the athletic director, it's always discussions about budget and and lower the costs. Try to lower yeah. the costs, because yeah. uh, the the income isn't sure. You, you you don't you don't get the budget is a difference." You can say this is our budget, but you need the money to fill in the budget. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you, you can always talk about hey, uh, the, the president come and say hey, uh, head coach, uh, give me your budget. I make him a budget, but yeah, he has to make the income. He has to see how how you <laughs> yeah. fill all these spots uh, with dollars or, or euros. That's but it. So if you so you start in Madrid, how is Madrid going to go and play? I don't know. Look, Spain is is a pretty big country. From Madrid to Barcelona is a big, yeah. big, big bus ride. I can see that. Now, where else are they going to go? Italy? Are they going to bus to Italy? No, they fly to Italy. Fly. So now, now we're not talking busing. We're talking exponential cost, right? Yes. Now we're going to fly, and I'm telling you, that's that's one thing. That's not going to fly. <laughs> like that's too expensive. Yeah. So one of the things that I <clears throat> when I, when when um, the league was talking about ex uh, uh, expansion. I was always thinking, well, there has to be on the continent where you, it's not too far to travel, stay away from flying. Uh, but you know, and now, I, did I see this uh, thing about uh, the UK, a team in the UK? Yeah, they, they, think, uh, they think about that, yeah. 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 I, I yeah. don't know why they really want to have all these old NFL Europe things that's only uh, honestly a thing i i haven't understood so far i know patrick comes from the nfl europe and all these team uh it, it's it's maybe a, a big thing but honestly why not having a new league with new teams mm. May, maybe ryan fire galaxy that's a big point that's that's big but mm. but i remember i remember discussions um that in the nfl europe that even the Dragons in Barcelona, they never had so many spectators. They never really filled the stadium. Um, Berlin Thunder. Uh, I, I think who was, the, who was the coach there? Was it Jack Bignell? Bignell? Jack Bignell. Yeah. yeah, Jack Bignell. And one of my running backs uh, in Germany, uh, he played for me in the GFL then. He played for them. And he got like, well, we don't have enough spectators. And... Uh, and why why you start then a team in in Spain just cause this Barcelona Dragons uh, old traditional thing did it help? I don't know. I don't know. I, yeah. So brand recognition uh, is is a thing, right? Is, you know, if you want to 
if it's completely new, right now you can say Barcelona Dragons, and there will be people in Barcelona. Oh, Barcelona Dragons are back, you know that. But you know, if you if you just scratch the surface just a little bit, you're like, hold on, no, that's not the NFL Europe, uh, you yeah. know. But yeah. I don't know, yeah. Yeah, but it's, I, it's tough. Well, it's it's a business decision, and I'm I'm just a, a football coach. I don't want to get too yeah, much involved in all this. Just give us a team. Stuff. <laughs> yeah, give us a team. It's it's not it's not. Uh, these are decisions I I don't know enough about it. Um, but uh, uh, I, I thought, or I think, well, you need to check the market before you started. It. And yeah. and honestly, I think the expansion is too 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 fast, just too fast. We do not have the players uh, all over Europe, uh, the, the quality players to fill up so many leagues, so many yeah. good leagues. Yeah, there, there is, um, you know, there, there's a few people, I guess, you know, like Australians, you know, Brazilians, further away, you know, talent that come can come play. I think they need, to me, right, so... I'm not a yeah. business guy, but I'm trying to think as a business person. And I think, all right, so how many people live in Brazil? There's a shitload of them, right? Mm -hmm. So if we have, if we just have open up a Brazilian market, because there's a lot of players too. And in 2015, you know, I was the head coach of the Australian national team and we played in the world championships against Brazil. And they, they had talent, yeah. man, like they had talent. And so, yeah. so if every team has, two Brazilians on a team, right? Yeah. You can open up the um, Game Pass market in Brazil. Mm -hmm. You know, that's something I would think of. And yeah. now Brazil is a really, that's a Mexico, same thing, all right? Mexico, so same. Two, uh, that, that's what I just want to say is Mexicans are great yeah. football players. <laughs> Shit, yeah. That, but, I mean, But they count as an, as Americans because they have an, uh, high school football programs, I think, in Mexico. Yeah, but uh, no, they, <laughs> okay. So... <laughs> Rules and regulations. Yeah, right? that's right. You, you every can team, make, you, you, yeah. yeah. Every yeah, team right, can have two right. Mexicans you, on the team, right? Yeah. Two Brazilians, two Mexicans, right? So now you, you know, guess what? All right, let's let's because I tell you this, there are some some a lot of people think that Mexicans aren't very big people. No, there are some huge Mexicans, are big people. So they every team could have one. Mexican offensive lineman. I'm telling you, yes. there there are yeah. enough of them, and they're good enough, right? So yes. then you have yeah. solved that one problem. Opening up Game Pass in Mexico and in Brazil, two Mexicans, yeah. two Brazilians. There you go. The the, the only thing the problem. is 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 the time difference. <laughs> I think Brazil Brazil would be okay with four hours before, but they so, can. Uh, but they can stream it. They can look at uh, the day after or whatever. Yeah. Uh, my my biggest problem would be like the NFL Europe, John, is the cost. If you have Mexican players, you cannot you cannot get them for cheap money, uh, for for low, for less money, uh, like a German guy here who is working and whatever. You have to bring in a Mexican guy. Um, that's a lot of money. He costs just more. He's a pro player. Sure. Yeah. Well, sure, but like. Yeah. Again, look, I always I say this. Uh, I don't know how many times a week. You're like, if we if we if we're gonna make um, <laughs> if we're gonna make an omelet, we gotta crack some eggs, right? Yes. So yeah. if we wanna if we wanna create a pro league, then we have to take some steps. Yes. And that's, nobody's that's and like you said before, nobody's waiting for crappy football to happen. They yeah. want they want guys that can they like I, that they can look up and like. Players go like, I want to play there. You know, That's fans right. enjoying yeah. this game. Like, this is yeah. next level football. And you got to yeah. find ways to do it. That's true. Yeah, that's true. You could you could argue, look, so, for example, um, you can have, what, what is the number of Americans you can have on a team? Four? Four. Yeah. Right. Yeah. You can say you can have five Americans on a team, and one of them has to be an offensive lineman. Yeah. For example. Yeah. Like you can all these rules, you can you know you can yeah, make the especially rules because you're not in a federation. You can you can make your own rules. It's yeah. a business. Yeah. You, they can make their own rules, and and this would be a great rule. Just having hey, I would say six Americans, um, offensive line and defensive line. Yeah, because because yeah. these guys bring so much. They bring so much impact about even about weightlifting. 
We, we are sure. so far behind about lifting and running for off for linemen. Um, they all think, hey, I, I'm big. And no, no, you have to be athletic. Look at these offensive linemen right now on college or, or NFL level. There is no big belly. You don't see a guy with a big belly like in the past. These guys can move. They're fast. They are athletic. And, and I, I think this would bring a big impact for especially this group of guys when you have good offensive and defensive linemen who show them how they practiced uh, in the United States at college level. Yeah. John, you, you, oh, yep. sorry. On, John. <laughs> John, you, you had in, in your podcast already co-owner Rene Engel from Rheinfire. After your talk with him, what makes Rheinfire so special? What is financially also maybe different? What, what are your thoughts after your interview with him? Yeah, um, Rene Engel is is an awesome dude. That's that's one, right? And a and former player. He, he's a former player, you know, linebacker for Dusseldorf Panther and a national yeah. team. And look, so when I was in Dusseldorf and was coaching there, that's where I actually met him for the first time, right? And we had some talks about football and he's talking about coverage and he knows his shit, man. Like he knows football, right? So that's great. So then on top of that, he's very smart. So not just as a smart football player, but he's, he's a very intelligent man and he has a passion for the game. So um, now he's a, he's a Steuerberater, right, Martin? So he can figure <laughs> yes, out how yes. to do this cheap too. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But I, I called um, him when we started in Stuttgart. I called him and asked him a couple of questions. He, uh, he played for me. Uh, yeah, he's a yeah. former player for me. Um, uh, and like you said, he's a great, he's a great guy, a great person, um, very smart. And I don't know whether you guys know it, but his father, um, his father is one of the people who, uh, started the German hockey league. Ice hockey. The ice hockey league, yeah. Yeah, he, he, he was he was like a, a former ice hockey president with a um, uh, penguins. Uh, what what was the name? Um, close to Düsseldorf, close to Krefeld, Krefeld? penguins, Krefeld I penguins, so. I think. And he was the president there, and they started the the German hockey league. Um, so, uh, so his background is a little bit about sports, and he knows mm -hmm. it, and he knows. Uh, How, how things worked and so uh, wasn't I was wondering that he wasn't wondering that he started the the, the right yeah. fire organization yeah. and and he he's a great a great person yeah with a lot of yeah. knowledge and yeah. uh, also nice yeah also very nice yeah. person yeah. but the, so so that's that's part that's part of I think um, his passion for the game yeah. um, a couple of his colleagues you know he's He was he was able to get give them that same passion that, that he has, right? But yeah. what's what's special? Look, I think what you have in in Dusseldorf is something special in the city. The Rhine Rhine Fire was always you know sellout crowds, you know, in the NFL Europe days, right? So there really is a strong market for Rhine Fire. And um, even though, you know, it's not the NFL Europe Ryan fire, you know, you see that fans are coming back and doing a yeah. great job with that. And and they did, do you remember, they did, the fans did every year, I think twice, this Cologne tour when they went with the boat to Cologne yeah, and all these Ryan fire fans, the, the fan base was still existing there in, in the yeah. yeah. And uh, like, that, that's, yeah. that's the interesting part. Yeah. And and so so if you have that you know you know that this fan base is 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 yeah. was was huge right so um, and then having a vision because I um, this was I think I was I was talking to him I don't know if I'm making this up or like in in the year before they joined the league right it was year one I guess um, and he didn't mention anything but he was talking about you know, if they're going to have a league and who are they going to bring as the head coach, right? And he yeah. was sort of, he wasn't saying who, but I could sort of, I, I figured it out, you know, who he was talking about, right? Yeah. And that, yeah. is, that, is a, that is a brilliant move too, right? Yeah. To get the guy who was there before and 
obviously Jim Tomsula is also great dude, a great guy, great coach. You know, like um, I was lucky to to work with him some camps in the NFL Europe and and learn from him. Um, having the career that he had after the NFL Europe is to all is is really awesome and. Then having him come back is 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 just yeah, you know, it's a very smart move, right? Yeah. Then they're in the area where there's a lot of uh, talent. In a way, is where I, I'm. I can't say you know most of German talent is, but there's a lot of talent there. So there's there is a little bit of a perfect storm. Why Ryan Fire is is a great spot. Yeah, that's for sure. Yeah, we got we got you guys are gone. No <laughs> issues. No, 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 no. You good? Um, no, yeah. So that that's what I thought. Like, there's there is that's very good. And I, I'm not sure about Frankfurt at the moment. Um, do they still have large numbers uh, in the stands? Yeah, yeah, getting better. Uh, I think these. Um, honestly, I think Ryan Fire, Frankfurt, and Berlin. They have they they're really making a good way. They they work very good. Uh, the Thunder organization is great, uh, working good, becoming better, becoming more fans. And um, okay. and I think the last game when Frankfurt the Galaxy played Ryan Fire, I think they had more than ten thousand spectators at the stadium. So that's for the stadium in Frankfurt is very good. It's a very good number. And uh, mm. yeah, it's it's going. Nice. What I heard is that the TV. Uh, stats are lower than they expected, but I don't know about that. Because then it's somebody told me that's different with streaming and and there are other stuff. And hey, hey uh, I'm a football coach. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I got. I have no idea about all these things. Um, what what's really going on? So I cannot say this is true or not. I don't know. Mm -hmm. Okay, but um, oh, sorry, Johannes, I'm. Yeah, no, go you uh, go on because I want to switch to my last topic, but but go on with this topic, please. Yeah. No, like it's kind of an elf topic, sort of flowing forwards. Like uh, Martin was saying, he um, he wasn't coaching this year for the first time in in forever. Um, you know, there is uh, there is vacancies in the NF, uh, in the elf, eh? So maybe you're <laughs> gonna get a phone call soon, Martin. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we'll see. We'll see. <laughs> yeah, that's it. <laughs> yeah. Okay, and so I would have my last question for both of you, but um, let's start with with John. You would have two contracts: one of an ELF team and one of an GFL team. The conditions are very similar. What would you do? Oh yeah. Um. Well, it's 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 probably similar to what uh, Martin said earlier in terms of. The conditions is you want to um, uh, you want to know what you get get yourself into, right? So, what are these con conditions? Who is in the organization? Um, what is the experience of an organization? Uh, those kind of things are important. Um, but um, the there's there's lots of people who are very well organized want to do everything the right way great but some of them they they talk a bigger game than what they actually can 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 do at the end of the day and that that's finding that out right if it's real that is that will decide where it's going to go so you have to do a lot more research into what what it actually is going on in the organizations now having said that and it also depends in on who you know in these organizations, right? Yeah. So um, if you if you can talk to you know coaches or, or who've worked there before or players or management that you know of and that they 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 are honest and open when they talk to you, um, that that is that's important. Um, the we're we're looking at at the moment we're looking to like recruit some players for for Croydon here from a local team right and and like when i when i talk to anybody is it re what is really critical is that you you get all the questions out of the way 
you know, you need to know exactly what you get yourself into and managing expectations is one, right? So, um, and that goes for both ways, right? It, it can't be a one way street where, where, um, they don't know everything about you and you don't know everything about them because if that's not a, the, the right fit, then you, then you end up with, well, maybe we have to do that uh, research, Martin, where we sell a, the last 20 years, how many coaches were actually in for yeah. hired by the Panthers. Right. So you need to know what you get yourself into. And, um, that, that would determine the outcome there, Johannes. Okay. But overall, would you have interest, interest for the ELF? Um, oh, that way. Yeah. <clears throat> um, Yeah, sure. Yeah, like I, I think it's um, my decision to to go to any team is based on, you know, the the expectations that I have for an organization, and 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 if I want to be a part of those expectations, and and winning is always what you want to do, right? Yeah, it, it's it's not it's not about the, the winning. Like we 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 want to win this year. Well, okay. Do we have everything needed to win? That that is ultimately like, uh, do we have the players? Do we have the coaching staff? Do we have the facilities? Do we have we, you know, meeting rooms? The 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 cameras at practice. Um, how do we how do we travel? Right? Do like all these kind of things are important to figure out. Um, at the end of the day, that's what you all want to know. Like, what's going on? Did I miss anything, Martin? What do you think? Uh, well, um, I, I totally agree with, with everything uh, John said. Uh, the, the only thing, well, I'm, I'm interested in, and I'm open for, for all uh, teams. I think the, the, the main thing for me as a coach is um, it's not the league. And it's not the, it, it's always great to be successful and it's always great uh, coaching in these big leagues um, but at the end of the day it's the coaching part what's the most interesting thing and and all the all the little things John said about facilities coaching staff people around them around the organization do I know them or do they support that and uh, and their expectations and that, that's all very important but i i would like to to really have a situation where i can coach the way i would like to coach and uh the, the people around me should be uh, also great and uh and it's not that somebody calls you and goes like hey we are here in the elf you can you can coach on the highest level on no 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 wait a minute wait a minute let me who is involved what who is the gm uh, what facilities you have because um it is it is the big elf and it's the big gfl and in both leagues i can tell you i can guarantee you they don't practice on the same field every week Then they go like, oh, no, we have to go. We have to switch to this field. And they have they do not have facility. That's one thing what, what Sean said about Dresden. Your Dresden did a great job in facilities. It's a little college feeling there uh, if you're in Dresden. You got your own, you got a nice stadium, uh, first of all. You got uh, great practice facilities. You got your office. You have meeting rooms. You have good, uh, now, now I think they have a weightlifting room at the, at the same spot. Um, so these are things you're looking for as a coach to, to be successful. Otherwise, it's always a struggle. You, you put so much energy in other stuff, then you cannot doing your job. And doing your job is the, the thing because the people hire you. That's, that's the only thing. And so for me, coaching is the big part. Um, it's, it's just uh, I want to I coach talent. I want to coach people. And... Uh, in my philosophy, if you if you coach the right way and you find the right program, you will become successful. That's just you work hard, you're disciplined, you will become successful. That's that's it. Okay, yeah, thanks both of you. <laughs> was uh, was very interesting for me as well. Yeah, yeah. Mm. 
Yeah, so good, yeah. from my side, I would be done for my topics. John or Martin, do you have a topic which we should discuss well, I, I, here? I have Johannes for my topics. I have no topics. <laughs> <laughs> Johannes is the guy who runs the show. <laughs> I'm just the face yeah. for it. But Johannes yeah. is the guy who runs the show. He, he's doing yeah. everything here. You have the knowledge yeah. and the experience, Martin. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Football uh, I would say, um, I, you know, maybe this is sort of uh, flows on from your last question there, Johannes, is that um, I, I haven't seen really much uh, GFL football lately, right? What is the, is there a distance? Is the Elf League separating from the GFL? How do, how do you see that, Martin? Um, it was. I think they were in a good, good way. But, well, it's, 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 it's hard to say that for me, but uh, with the situation of the search that you put a coaching staff from the top GFL team and the team and the top GFL team into the ELF and they are successful, they, they're really successful, um, then you can see the difference wasn't too far away. Mm -hmm. um, now we have to say uh, the the conference they played in this year uh, probably didn't had the top teams. I thought the Raiders are a little bit more uh, competitive, um, but um, they had their problems probably. So now it will be interesting if they play Warclaw this uh, this weekend. Um, that's a very good football team. Um, and after watching, Johannes, you remember, I said that one time, I think it was Hamburg against Berlin. I watched, we watched and, it, and uh, I, I have to say uh, the, the same, the same issue. Um, this was the first time I saw an offensive lineman not in shape or two or three offensive linemen are just not in shape. And oh, wow. uh, this made for me just the impression, no, no. Now they start getting the level of football in the ELF is 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 going lower a little bit, um, cause the cause the amount of players they they don't have enough that we don't have enough players and and Potsdam is a very good football team they they good um, Braunschweig is coming back Dresden is a very good football program and I think all of all of these three teams and probably more too could start and play in the ELF. Could, could do that. Um, and their teams in the ELF, they can compete in the, in the GFL and there are some GFL teams could compete in the ELF, I would say. Mm. The, the, the medias are way better in the ELF. Yeah, yeah. Way, way better. Well, it's, I've, I've mentioned this before. Uh, wouldn't it be nice if the champion of the GFL plays the champion of the ELF at the end of the year? Oh. Yeah, it would kind be of Super game. Bowl. Huh? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> German Super Bowl. Yeah, the German AF, Super Bowl. AFC, the NFC. I don't know if it's uh, if it's the Vikings. It's not the German Super Bowl, but uh, <laughs> no, it, no. It, it's hey, uh, honestly, I, uh, that's just a wish. If if it doesn't turns out that the European teams um, compete in the ELF. The way the ELF wants it. What about combining the GFL and the and the ELF teams? Then why not? You remember the Football League of Europe from Axel Gurnett? Yeah, the FLE. Yeah, yeah. Were in. I yeah. I remember the discussion, and I was at this meeting. I think it was in ninety seven or ninety eight uh, that the Hamburg Blue Devils got the chance to play in the GFL. So. Uh, what about, about making the, the German teams of the ELF going into the German teams of the GFL or, or combining that? I, I don't know how and I don't know uh, <laughs> what. It's, it's just, yeah. man, I'm, I'm long enough in football and I saw so many things in Germany. I, I, and I, I still uh, love the game and I think it should, the game is for the players and the fans and, and we should think about that. Yeah. It's it's not for the presidents and the, but but all the sports have the same problems with that that people uh, think and and I was the president of the Bavarian Football Federation. I also can say it's not so easy. 
it's it's easy to say sit here as a football coach and go ah people should combine and compete together across it's all about the players and no it's there's so many different things and and nothing is black and white there are that's always gray it's always it. gray there are always mm. uh, steps to climb to to make things happen mm. yeah so are you saying the the both leagues the top teams of both leagues are compatible yeah yeah i would say yeah. that like the um in 2014 with uh with uh, dresden uh, we played uh, the big six remember that yes i remember that yeah how was so that? we yeah so we had to uh we had to go to vienna and um so we we were it was a very hard fought game but we 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 beat vienna at that place And, um, you know, that was first hand that I, you know, on the sideline, you can see they're, they're doing a really good job there in, in yeah. Vienna, but in, in Austria in, in, in particular, or in terms of Vienna and Innsbruck of yeah. you know, creating some great, you know, local talent. Right? Yeah. And, and I think uh, for them, it was important that the ELF started because in Austria, there was just the Vikings and the Raiders and yeah, all two, the other two teams. horse race. Yeah, they, they didn't have a chance to compete because they had so great, such great programs. Uh, it's unbelievable. Yeah, yeah. No, yeah, that's, that's yeah, absolutely. But uh, a, a kind of doomsday scenario, right, is a little bit like, like, like you said, Hamburg uh, Blue Devils getting into the GFL after the FLE, you know, fell apart. Yeah. That that's that that's because if you like the the German teams in in the Elf, you know, I'm pretty yeah. sure that there will be well, continuing it, afterwards if there was ever a problem. Yeah. Well, we hope we don't hope that the ELF falls apart. No, but it's no, uh, no. It, it, it's it, it takes a little bit more. Or it takes some more years to to get the league established. I think. Well, let, let's finish with this. Is because you know in a in a COVID year starting a, a new league that that was a miracle yeah. and Patrick and and all his people did a fantastic job getting it off the ground and um, look it, when you look at startup leagues in the U.S. you know more or less they all yeah. failed yeah. at some point yeah. right and more yeah, it, earlier failing. than later yeah. so. They've already done a much better job than a lot of people thought they would yes. do, and I just hope it becomes what everybody wants it to be you know, in the future. Yeah, that's right. That's right. Okay. All Any right. Last thoughts. So let's finish this episode. <laughs> so uh, th thank you both uh, a lot. It was a nice crossover episode for both podcasts. I think um, so. I will put your podcast in our show notes. Hopefully you can do this as well in, in yours, John. And so uh, thanks for, for listening or watching us on YouTube. And yeah, hear us next time, hopefully soon. And subscribe for our podcast so you will hear uh, or uh, you, you will get the information when a new episode comes out. So thank you all a lot and uh, have a nice day. All right. Goodbye, everybody. All right. Thanks, Johannes. Thanks, John. Thanks, Goodbye. John. Goodbye. Goodbye. Bye. See you. Bye. See you. Bye. Okay.